We were told that 2021 would be the year when everything starts to get back to normal. But that hasn't exactly been the case, has it? It has been just over a month, and there is still chaos everywhere. We have seen a wild riot at the US Capitol, civil unrest has been erupting in major cities from coast to coast, millions of people have filed for unemployment benefits, a president was impeached, and a crazy ride on Wall Street made GameStop a national phenomenon. That would normally be enough for an entire year, but we are still in the first week of February. All throughout history there have been critical turning points when events have greatly accelerated, and it appears that we have reached one of those turning points. In fact, this may be turn out to be the biggest turning point of them all. Millions upon millions of Americans can sense that big trouble is ahead. For many, it is like a gut feeling that they just can't shake. Our nation is being shaken in thousands of different ways, and so many of us can feel that things are building up to some sort of a grand crescendo. So that is why so many Americans are stockpiling guns, silver and food right now. They want to be ready for what is ahead. 2020 was a record year for US gun purchases, but instead of slowing down in January, gun sales went even higher. According to the FBI's National Instant Criminal Background Check NCIS data, 4.3 million firearm background checks were initiated in January. That's the highest number on record, and up over 300,000 in comparison to December 2020. Three of the top 10 highest weeks are now from January 2021. The National Shooting Sports Foundation's adjusted background check figure of 2 million, reached by subtracting out background code permit checks and permit rechecks and checks on active concealed carry permits, was a jump from its adjusted figure of 1.1 million in January 2020. One of the biggest reasons why people feel a need to be armed right now is because crime rates have been absolutely skyrocketing. In particular, murder rates in our major cities rose by an average of 30% last year. Murder rates in nearly three dozen American cities exploded in 2020, rising 30% over the previous year, resulting in 1,200 more deaths from murder last year when compared to 2019, according to a new study examining possible connections between crime, the pandemic and protests against police brutality. Homicide rates were higher during every month of 2020 relative to rates from the previous year. That said, rates increased significantly in June, well after the pandemic began, coinciding with the death of George Floyd and the mass protests that followed, states a report from the National Commission of COVID-19 and Criminal Justice NCCCJ, titled Pandemic, Social Unrest and Crime in U.S. Cities. We have never seen an increase of that magnitude from one year to the next, and the brutality of some of these murders has been off the charts. For example, the recent murder of two women in California deeply shocked people all over the nation. A brother of up-and-coming rapper Uzi Marcus was arrested in California following an eight-hour standoff with police and charged with murdering two women, whose lifeless bodies were captured in an Instagram Live video. Raymond Weber, 29, was taken into custody by police in Vacaville at around 8.30 a.m. on Saturday and was then booked into the Solano County Jail on two counts of first-degree murder and multiple other felonies, including domestic assault. In addition to the straight-up crime we have been witnessing, endless political violence has also made some of our largest cities almost unlivable at this point. I honestly do not know why anyone would want to live in downtown Portland, Oregon, downtown Seattle now. Of course conditions are not much better in the core areas of many of our other major metropolitan areas. Meanwhile, our economy continues to be greatly shaken and recent volatility in the financial markets caused a massive run on physical silver. U.S. bullion broker Apmex warned of delays in processing silver transactions because of surging volumes. Other U.S. dealers, including JM Bullion and SD Bullion, warned customers of shipping delays of 5 to 10 days. Everett Millman at Gainesville Coins in Florida said they were expecting shipping delays, perhaps until perhaps mid-March, for some products like Silver Eagles and Silver Maples. Things have calmed down a bit after the craziness of the past few days, but people are going to continue voraciously buying silver. Precious metals have been a safe haven all throughout human history, and that is especially true during highly inflationary times. And as I have talked about extensively, we are moving into very highly inflationary times. In addition to gold and silver, Americans have also been feverishly stockpiling food. 
Wise Company estimated in 2018 that Americans were buying between $400 million and $450 million worth of emergency food supplies per year. And, while Wise declined to release any specific revenue figures, Ericsson tells CNBC make it that the company saw its food sales surge by, probably five or six times, in 2020 amid the pandemic. In the long run, I would argue that food is more important than guns or silver, because you can't eat guns or silver when you are hungry. And yes, things will eventually get that bad. Most people don't understand the specifics of what is coming, but what they do know is that they have a gnawing feeling deep inside that they can't shake that really bad things are on the horizon. I would strongly encourage you to use this current period of relative stability to get prepared for the very uncertain times that are ahead of us. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken, and our society will soon be turned completely upside down. You don't have to be a cog in the system. For most of us, the only option that was presented while we were growing up was to get on the hamster wheel and run as fast as we could. You know what I mean, go to school, get a job, pay a mortgage, prepare for retirement, etc. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you truly want to unplug from the system and live your life off the grid, you can. Of course it isn't easy, but nothing in life really worth doing ever is. Sadly, the lives of most people are defined by the matrix that the vast majority of us are connected to on a daily basis. In most cases, your income and status in society are defined by whatever job has been given to you by whichever corporation you are currently working for. We like to call ourselves employees, but in essence we are basically corporate servants. Of course most people feel like they can't quit their corporate jobs because each month they have to make payments on mortgages, auto loans and credit card debts that they owe to giant corporate financial institutions. And most people also feel the need to constantly prepare for retirement by pouring money into corporate securities in the rigged game that we call the stock market. But what is going to happen to all of them when our economic and financial systems completely implode? During this current economic downturn, Millions upon millions of Americans have already lost their jobs, and it is being reported that millions of Americans could potentially be evicted from their homes in 2021. When things go bad, it is the little guy that gets crushed first. But you don't have to wait around for that to happen. An increasing number of Americans have decided that living off the grid is the way to go. For example, 65-year-old Bob Wells will never have to make a mortgage payment or pay rent ever again. He lives on public lands in his GMC Savannah, and he uses solar power to run his 12-volt refrigerator. In recent years he has become internationally known for his YouTube channel named, Cheap RV Living, but it wasn't always this way. In fact, his decision to adopt a nomad lifestyle was originally sparked by deep dissatisfaction with the corporate job that he was working. Before becoming a nomad in 1995, Bob lived in Anchorage, Alaska, with his wife and two boys. He worked as a union clerk at the same Safeway where his father had worked until retirement, only to die two years later. Bob didn't want his father's fate, but there he was. As days became decades, he went to a job he hated, worked with people he didn't like, to buy things he didn't want. By his own telling, he was the living embodiment of Thoreau's, quiet desperation. He knew he wasn't happy, but it never occurred to him to live differently. When he suddenly found himself divorced, Bob made a dramatic choice that changed his life forever. Then, when he was 40 years old, the divorce happened. After paying alimony and child support, he was taking home $1,200 a month, $800 of which went towards rent. One day, fretting about impossible finances, he saw a green box van for sale and thought, why don't I buy that van and move into it? The idea struck him as crazy, but with the prospect of homelessness closing in, he drained the last $1,500 in his savings account and bought the van that was just, too ratty looking, for its previous owner. He gave his landlord notice that night, threw a sleeping pad in the back of his new home, and cried himself to sleep. Today, he has hundreds of thousands of online followers, and he is even featured in a new film called, Nomadland. But despite all of that success, he will continue to live in his GMC Savannah. For others, living in a van is not a palatable option, but they have still chosen to live off the grid. Over in the UK, a British couple named Matthew and Karis Watkinson have fully embraced a philosophy known as collapsology. 
no bills, no mortgage, an endless supply of homegrown grub and even a hot tub to relax in, welcome to the world of two Brits prepared for the end. Essex vets Matthew and Karis Watkinson gave up the rat race for the good life in the Welsh countryside after reading about, Collapsology, a movement based around the theory that society as we know it could fall apart. Wouldn't it be great to have no bills every single month? Matthew and Karis gave up their £30,000 a year jobs, and now they produce their own food on three acres of land in Pembrokeshire. Matthew and Karis, 35, bought three acres of land in Pembrokeshire for £35,000 and spent a further £25,000 on building a house, chicken coops, greenhouses, a horse poo-powered gas cooker and even a hot tub. They are entirely self-sufficient, installing solar panels, growing their own fruit and veg, building beehives, rearing up to 140 chickens and converting lorries and flatbed hay trailers into zero-carbon living quarters. If the collapse of our society greatly accelerates, they are ready. Meanwhile, they don't have to get up at the crack of dawn every morning and drag themselves to corporate jobs that they absolutely hate. As I was preparing this video, I was reminded of a Reddit post that I saw earlier today. I don't understand how people would rather have a job than be dead. I genuinely don't understand the motive. I picked a field I love, I became educated, I have had multiple jobs that are vastly different from each other and everyone gives me the same overwhelming feeling of, I'd literally rather die than do this. It's been every job I've ever had, even before graduating college. I simply don't feel rewarded when I put in effort to complete a task, I never get fulfillment out of a job well done. I don't understand how people do this their whole lives. Have you ever felt that way? I think that most of us have. Matthew and Karis may have simple lives, but they are absolutely thrilled to be free of the system. We've built a farm for a lot less than £100,000 and it's all ours. We don't owe anybody any money and we don't have any bills, why aren't more people doing this? I think that is a perfect question. Why aren't more people doing this? If you hate what your life has become, maybe it is time for a big change. Countless others have gotten free from the system, and you can do it too. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. And thanks for your valuable feedback. Stay safe and healthy friends.